John Wilson. Welcome to a minor episode of what is not actually part of the whole episode group. This is a special edition. I was listening to James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. They went undercover into a Democratic campaign for a senator in Tennessee. And he's also gone undercover for some other senatorial campaigns. And I would like to talk about what I heard from these campaigns. Anyway, um, it's 2018. We are one month away from the election uh, for 2018. We've been told that there's going to be a blue wave and the Democrats are going to sweep the House and sweep the Senate and they're going to impeach Trump and impeach Kavanaugh. So I would just like to talk to Democrats, if I could, for a moment. Um, and maybe I'll get some opinions. Maybe somebody will, will write to me. Um, anyway, what is a moral high ground? I heard the campaign people for the the person running for a senator in Tennessee, a Democratic senator, saying, well, we're going to take the moral high ground. But I heard that they were lying about um, the, sen the senator candidate saying that he would have voted for confirming Kavanaugh um, in, a, in an attempt to get votes because the people of Tennessee are ignorant because they're Republican and they stand for Trump and they stand for um, not making abortion, uh, abortion so easy and so legal um, because they feel that everyone has the right to life. Well, I want to talk about what is the moral high ground. What is the moral high ground with Democrats? What is the moral high ground with people who are liberal, or I'll even say communist? I'm not maybe talking to the entire Democratic Party. I'm talking to the ones that are communist, but they're so far gone, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this and understand it. Um, what is the moral high ground? Is it homosexuality? Is it abortion? Is it lying to get votes? Is it... Um, Bussing in people from other states to vote in an election where they're not part of that district? Is it illegals voting? Is it dead people voting? Um, is it more people registered to vote in a certain district than there are actually people who live in that district? Is that a moral high ground? Um, being uncivil, is that a moral high ground? We're not going to be civilized until we win. Civil is what Hillary Clinton has said. She says we're not going to be civil until we win the election because they don't deserve us to be civil, because we're apparently deplorable. Now, I'm not a Republican, but I am deplorable because I did vote for President Trump. And I wasn't sure about that vote until I saw Hillary's reaction and the reaction of the communists who have been going crazy ever since he was elected. So what else is the moral high ground? Um, harassing senators and presidential cabinet members in restaurants and forcing them to leave? Is that a moral high ground? Not telling not letting people argue and debate with you in a civilized setting but yelling them down and actually threatening them with physical violence is that moral high ground is killing people that you don't agree with is that a moral high ground just asking because it seems like the idea of moral high ground is different or skewed from what moral actually means so i want to know where they get their idea of what their moral code is do you get it from the quran is it the process of takaya or takia where it's okay to lie to infidels because infidels don't matter as long as you try to extend the the arms of islam extend islam into the world it's okay to lie that's called takia um and then there's hudabaya which is a, a treaty that muhammad made with a, a rival and he said we won't attack you for i guess it might, it might be 10 years and uh, in two years, when he had his army built up, he attacked them and took them out. That's Hudubaya, and that's what Muslims remember as the strategy they use. When they're smaller than someone, they make peace. When they're larger than someone, they attack. And don't call me a liar. Hudubaya is a tactic, and it uh, was started by the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad. Um, anyway, and Takiya is actually a principle. I read it in the English version of the Quran, which... Um, Islamic friends have told me that that's not the true version and you have to understand Arabic in order to understand the Quran. Okay, maybe I misinterpreted when you s said you can lie to people and it's okay. Because what's the purpose of communicating if you lie? Anyway, um, so what else is moral code? Is it the Satanic Bible? Um, written by Anton LaVey. Where it says, do what thou will. Do what's good in your own mind because that's great if it makes you happy. Um, it can't be that bad. If it makes you happy, then why are you so sad? Anyway, little Cheryl Crow there. She probably doesn't like me saying that, especially when I'm a, uh, I'm a supporter of Trump. Um, anyway, I didn't used to be. Um, 
but I am now, especially from the attitudes and uncivility of Democrats, and I, I call them communists because they've overridden the Communist Party. Um, is the Egyptian Book of the Dead, is that something that's your moral code? Like how they chopped Osiris up in little pieces and spread them out, and ISIS like, tried to put them back together? Is that your moral code? Um, if morals, let me think about this for a second so I can get this right. Um, morals are a creed, a, a code to live by. And they come from the Torah. The Torah are the first five books of what English people or the Western civilization calls the Bible. Um, and the reason why I know this is because the moral code in the Torah agrees with nature. When you go against the moral code of the, of the Torah, it's been scientifically, uh, there's a lot of scientific evidence to prove that going against the Torah is going against nature. So if you're going against nature, how is that a moral code? Moral code should be obvious. It should be something that you can check up on. Like I, if I make a moral code based on what John Wilson believes, I don't know, two years from now, maybe I say, well, you know what? I didn't think that was right. Maybe I'll go back and I'll change that. That means I was wrong to begin with. So then when I change my mind, what, ma what makes you want to believe me again? But the thing about the Torah is it is a moral code that has been proven to follow nature because in his infinite wisdom, God is the creator of nature, and he told us how to live based on his book that he gave us. And if you don't believe that, that's fine. That's perfect. Not perfect for you, but I mean, it, but it means you don't have a moral code because the whole basis of morality is based on the Torah. Or the Bible, for Old Testament for you people that don't like me saying Torah. Um, Basically, you have to have a set standard of morals to have a moral code. If that standard keeps moving, then it's opinion. It's not a moral code. Anyway, let me think about this again. Um, any other person who claims to have a moral code outside of nature, outside the Torah, doesn't have a moral code. They have an opinion. And I'm sorry, but opinion is subjective, not objective. Okay, so if you work in a Senate candidate's office and the candidate that you work for lies to get votes which i know a lot of people have said that most candidates who are in political office will lie to get votes but this one this time project veritas went undercover james o'keefe and they actually caught the people who are working in this wannabe senator's office saying he's a good democrat he'll be a good democrat what well, we had to say that to, to appeal to the moderate republicans and uh, the person who was being a journalist who was undercover said, why are the people of Tennessee so ignorant? And they said, I don't know why the people of Tennessee are so ignorant. But what they're saying is that they are taking the people's choice away from them, saying, well, these people are too stupid to understand that they're endorsing the wrong person. So we, being 20-something-year-old children who think that they have an idea of what morality is based on what they haven't been taught in school, and what they haven't been taught by the baby boomers. And they say, well, we're going to take this so-called morality that feels good, and we're going to inflict it on everybody else. That's not, that's not democracy. That's called totalitarianism. Anyway, um, I want to talk about President Trump. In following your so-called moral code, you're probably following Aleister Crowley, or you're probably following the Koran, or the Book of the Dead, or you've had a new cabal and you've come up with your own book, like the Scientologists did, or uh, you're forming, you're, you're following a form of takia, which I talked about, or you're a, a proponent of Machiavelli. Machiavelli says necessity dictates morality. If I need to win, I will do anything in my power necessary to win, whether it's kill, maim, destroy, destroy someone's character, or work underhandedly as long as it achieves the goal of the greater good. And by the way, the greater good is a Karl Marx philosophy. You can do anything for the greater good. Like if a thousand people said, we should punch you in the face, and you said, no, I don't think we should punch me in the face, but you know, it's for the greater good of everybody if we punch you in the face. So we'll punch you in the face because the greater good has to be satisfied. Because the greater good is always better because everybody together, you know, turns into a mob because that's mob mentality. That's not moral code. Moral code could be one person doing the right thing, standing up against a thousand. And that person will be justified. People who have this moving moral code are not justified in anything. So stop calling it a moral code. Just follow Machiavelli and stop lying about it. Um, so 
in order to know about the truth, I'll, I'll have um, a Zen cone to talk about. Um, I know Zen is a, is an Eastern philosophy. Um, the river tells no lies. But standing on the shore, the dishonest man still hears them. So think about that. If you only deal in lies and lies and deceit, then you're going to hear lies out of anything. And that's what I'm getting to President Trump. Um, in order to know the truth, our most, um, our actions have to match with our words. Our actions match with our words. And someone knows that if I say something and I do it, then I'm being truthful. If I say something that follows the laws of nature, I'm being truthful. If I say something and do something else, I am not being truthful. And that's just a plain matter of fact. Um, so what's the purpose of words if not to communicate? And if we lie when we communicate, we're not communicating. We're trying to achieve a certain goal. We don't care what the other person thinks as long as they believe what we're saying. So now I'm going to get on to the president. I don't know President Donald Trump personally. I've never met him. Um, I've known someone that got close to him, almost got him to sign a, uh, a baseball, but um, then the guards told me he didn't have time for that and they had to give him back. Anyway, my point is I've never met him, so I don't know if he's a liar or not. But when I heard the campaign and I thought of the alternative, Hillary Clinton, who I know in my heart to be an evil woman, and I know in my heart several things, and I know I pieced together evidence and uh, circumstantial evidence of who she is as a person. Um, I don't like her, um, and I hope that one day she repents of her evil and comes to know the Lord. But for the time being, she just needs to shut up and get out of the way. Because Well, actually, I, she's actually helping you. Um, she's helping the Republicans, because every time she says something, she makes us so angry with her words, because you guys just don't get it. You don't get the whole thing. To us, to people who are not Democrats, you guys are a bunch of loonies. Crazy Antifa guys with black hoods on that are yelling at people when they're trying to have a debate and a discussion with them. You're lunatics, right? Uh, delay, stop, destroy, kill. Well, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like Satan, right? He has come to rob, kill, and destroy. And that is what the Democrats are doing because they lost. It's like, you guys lost. Get over it. Civility. I saw today, um, on October 11th, I guess that's today, um, Senator Whitehouse shaking hands with President Trump. Senator Whitehouse had, during the confirmation hearing, seemed like he was vehemently opposed to anything President Trump was doing. But they got along with uh, the Clean Up the Ocean Act, and they were able to work together because they were both civil with each other. You can't achieve anything unless you're civil, unless you want to do it by violence and you want to cause a catastrophe of huge proportions. Um, we don't want to fight. We want to get along. That's the whole point of the United States. We, we went away from Europe to get away from them. We don't want their ways coming with us. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about President Trump. Now, I've heard Shepard Smith from Fox say he's a liar. I've heard Morning Joe say he's a liar. I've heard Chris Matthews say he's a liar. And I don't know, I can't even watch CNN. It makes me sick to watch it, so I have to turn it off. And I have to turn off MSNBC because it makes me sick. And so I listen to Fox. I know it's propaganda, but it makes me feel better until Shepard Smith comes on. And then he really makes me angry because... He's saying things that you guys are believing that aren't true. So here's how you can tell. Here's a good indicator. When someone says something and it happens, they're speaking the truth. So on his campaign promises, President Trump said he wants to put some constitutionalist judges on the court. That is why I voted for him, and that is what he did, even though the Democrats were trying to stop him. Now, I don't say Democrats. I know there's some... Decent Democrats as part of the walk away movement because they don't want to get the crazies like the communists. Um, anyway, if you've seen the way Hitler came to power, they're, they're doing the same exact things. Uh, I, it's to us now, this is our view Republicans and, and constitutionalists leading independents like myself. We're seeing you guys as loonies, lunatics who want to start a civil war. And what we're hoping for is that you all get locked up because you're crazy. Now, I assume that you see us, anyway, people with intelligence, 
sees the deplorables as people who have their shotgun, they smack their wife down, they drink their beer, and they say, man, I don't like that Donald Trump. He's a good guy. Okay, that's not us. We are intelligent thinking people. I mean, I don't, I'm not a, a person who, well, I don't want to insult anybody because there are people of different professions who do a lot of amazing work for everybody. So I'll just say that the people you think we are is not the people we are. And the people that we think you are, I'm sure, is not who you are. I'm sure that at some point, you got to tell yourself, I am not with these people in black hoods carrying around AK-47s yelling at people. I am not one of them. I hope not. I hope that we still have a Thomas Jefferson and a, a George Washington debate. I hope we still have an Alexander Hamilton and an Aaron Burr. Well, maybe don't go that far. We don't want that. Um, anyway, President Trump said that he would put two constitutionalist judges on the court. He did. That's the truth. He said that he would uh, pull out of the climate accord, which was a bogus deal for us. He did. That's the truth. Um, he said he was being spied upon by the Obama administration. He was. That's the truth. For weeks, he was called a liar. But he wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. Um, he said that he was going to cut taxes. And he did. And I love those little bit of tidbits in my pocket that Nancy Pelosi says, oh, those are just scraps from the table in her million-dollar house um, while people are sitting on the street in San Francisco with no homes. Anyway, uh, it, it's got to be voter fraud that why Nancy Pelosi keeps winning because there is no way someone like her can keep winning elections, especially someone who proclaims to be a Catholic and approves of abortion. If you approve of abortion, you are not evangelical. You are not a Christian. I'm sorry. That's just plain truth of it. If you support killing unborn life, you are not a Christian. So stop pretending and stop going around saying you're evangelist and we should get together and we should just vote for there are more important issues than abortion. No, there isn't. If I know that someone approves of abortion, I know exactly what kind of character they have. Now, if someone doesn't approve of abortion, I have to figure out what kind of character they have, like trying to figure out Joe Manchin, um, trying to figure out um, Morrissey. I think I'm going to vote for Blankenship if he's available because I don't like both of them. Um, and you know, Morris, he's Republican, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of problems. Anyway, I'm going to continue on with more things that have happened. Um, President Trump said that he would reduce the overbearing regulations. He has. The economy skyrocketed. Obama took credit for it because he's the one who put the regulations in place. If you want to take credit for um, somebody fixing something um, by you destroying it, I guess, yeah, he does have credit for that. Thanks. Um, thanks, President Obama. Um, he said he was going to move the U.S. Embassy. President Trump said he was going to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem or Yerushalayim. He did. He moved, <laughs> he moved the embassy. It was crazy. Palestinians went nuts. And they realized, you know, we're never going to make peace if we don't recognize Israel's right to exist. And you guys are never going to take Israel back. Period. End of story. Bye-bye. See you later. It's done. God's not letting you have it back. So make peace with them now while you can before you're destroyed maybe within the next 40 years as prophecy has told that it will be hap will happen to you um, Philistines Palestinians uh, who didn't really even exist before 1948 or 1967 um, and if I'm making you mad I'm sorry but you can you can try looking these things up and quoting a bunch of Wikipedia stuff but I've actually got newspaper articles and things from the time periods and I've looked things up sorry it's my belief system, not yours. So you're not going to shake me on what I've looked up and know to be true. All right, so truth. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem. You can't argue with that. That's the truth. He didn't lie. You can't say he's a Jew hater because he's got a son-in-law who's a Jew. And he moved, the, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He loves Israel. Israel is the only civilized country in that area. Think about it. Why would we be friends with anybody who's uncivilized who cuts people's heads off? Seriously. Anyway, let me think again. Um, so the other thing is um, he didn't do all this stuff alone. He had help from, you know, Paul Ryan. He had help from Mitch McConnell. They didn't want to at first. He had help from Lindsey Graham. Um, basically all the Republicans he got help from, except for maybe Mikowski. McClowski or whatever her name is from Alaska, she should not be reelected. She is not supporting the change that we need. Hope and change is what we're actually getting. Obama promised it, but 
we have hope that he'd stop changing things. So in a way, he wasn't lying to us. Um, so uh, the other people helped Trump accomplish what he said. But they listened to him. They talked to him. And they got along. Like Kanye West. I, I really don't really mind or talk about Kanye West because he's kind of a... To me, I don't know the man, but a lot of the things he said are, have been really crazy. And his wife is just... Uh, she annoys me. Um, I don't know her, maybe if I met her, but anyway, the fact that Kanye West reached out to Donald Trump and Donald Trump embraced him and said, yes, just talk to me. We make a deal. Tell me about your problems. I want to help. I want to help Chicago. I want to help San Francisco if you guys would let me, if you guys would stop obstructing me. And what, what is the Democrat, Democratic platform? Destroy Trump. Well, that's a really great platform. What is Trump's platform? Well, the unemployment rate is an all-time low for 49 years. It hasn't been this low. We almost don't have enough people. So we're going to have to increase legal immigration to get enough workers to come in here. And the fact that you guys have killed off a bunch of babies right now, we would have a huge workforce, but you killed them all. So now our productivity is limited because of the productivity we would have got out of the people that haven't been allowed to be born. Um, so anyway, I got another thing. Um, and yeah, I'm looking at a, a bunch of notes. Sorry. Um, <sighs> subjectivity and objectivity. As Shepard Smith was saying that Donald Trump is a liar, he was being subjective. Like Donald Trump said, President Trump said, sorry, I didn't mean to disrespect him, and I do respect him. He has earned my respect. Um, he said, boy, we've had like the biggest turnout for inauguration ever. Now, CNN didn't show the whole crowd, and they only reported on part of the news. They showed little pieces, parts, and they also said, well, this isn't actually the biggest crowd that's ever been. So he's a liar. Okay, he was looking at what he saw and what he remembered. He's not lying. He likes to, you know, he, he was a promoter. He likes to talk things up. But that's subjectivity, and you know that's subjectivity. Objectivity is when you can compare a true fact against what really happened, what reality, right? So truth is reality and nature. You can't change it. You can pretend to change it. You can turn your head. But when a brick hits you in the head because you said it's not really falling, it still hits you in the head, right? It's best to move out of the way and not pretend it's not there. So those are a few things that I just wanted to say. Objective truth is truth that is finite, truth that is provable. Did Trump say he was going to pull out of the climate accord? Yes. Did he pull out of the climate accord? Yes. And I was so happy. Polar bears didn't fall from the sky. The earth didn't get destroyed. The Maldives are still afloat. They haven't sunk as far as I know. So we do need to clean up our environment. And President Trump passed a, a law today, or passed a uh, legislation with, um, actually with this Senator Whitehouse, which is kind of interesting. Him and Senator Whitehouse are actually getting along and working together. Imagine what can happen when we're civil to each other and we bring up real-life issues instead of made-up junk to divide us. Obama was the divider-in-chief. Trump is trying to be the uniter-in-chief. You guys are making it really hard for him just because you're so bitter because you lost. You know, if I lost a soccer game, if I lost something, my mom would whoop my ass, right? She would whoop my ass and saying, stop being a poor sport. I lost a friend because I was a poor sport. And I don't want to ever do that again. You want competition with people because that makes you better. Competition makes you better. But when you try to kill the person who beats you, you're not proving anything except you're an idiot. So please, listen to me. I have... Actually, I don't think I have any further words. Um, you don't have to listen to me if you want, but I'm kind of getting annoyed, and I'm kind of sick of seeing people being bussed in to vote. I'm kind of sick of seeing voter fraud. You guys just watch it. We know this stuff is happening. We know it is. All you got to be is surveilled once, and you're going to prison, right? Okay, the illegals, yeah, they're getting away with voting. They've got to be deported. And they can come back in legally unless they voted in the elections and then they'll be put in prison. But voter fraud is a federal offense. 
and there are so many elections going on in November, you won't be able to cheat for all of them. You're not going to impeach Trump. You're not going to impeach Kavanaugh. So if I were you guys, the more of you that understands the logic in my reasoning, not the fact that I was passionate, and that if you turn the, if you turn the sound off, I look like I'm really angry, and that's terrible. That's called passive-aggressive, by the way. That's a tactic. You make somebody mad, and then they get angry. Oh, go figure. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up, but what is moral code? A moral code is something that is completely different from what you virtue signaling people think it is. Now, you can pretend like you're going to take over the moral code and keep moving it, but if it keeps moving, eventually you're going to end up on the wrong side, and then you're going to be cast out. Now, good news is I heard that the Zulus were allying with the Boers to stop them from getting evicted from their land. You know why? Because the Zulus want to eat. So the Zulus are working together, black guys and black women, people of brown skin. Now, we can't say African-Americans because they're actually African-African. But so are the Boers. The Boers are African African. They've been there for 400 years just about. Anyway, they realize that it's not skin color that makes them a united South Africa. It's a common goal, like eating, <laughs> to stay alive. So these communists want to push this stuff down your throat. Please, Democrats, don't listen to the communists. Don't let them override your party. Go back to the way Thomas Jefferson was when the party started. Please. Do not turn this country into a communist country. Look at Venezuela. Look at communist Russia for so long. Look at China. Um, look at the millions upon millions upon millions of people that have died because of that moron Karl Marx. So please, break out of the whatever trance that you're in. Look at these idiots in black robes and black hats going around yelling at people because they're trying to debate with them. They're trying to show them reason. And just please, I urge you, get some logic, get some common sense. You guys look like loonies to us. Anyway, I, and I appreciate the work, before I go, this is the end of the show, I appreciate the work of Ben Shapiro, who has a newspaper called The Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro says that facts do not care about your feelings, which is great. I'm tired of PC junk. I'm tired of being PC about everything. And, again, a, a shout-out to James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, who went undercover for Planned Parenthood, who went undercover in CNN, and who's going undercover right now to the senators that are saying one thing and doing another. You guys better watch it because he's putting this stuff out right now. And there is a sea change that's coming. We can restore civility to this country. Please, let's do so. Please heed the logic of my argument, and let's restore civility to this country. That's all I have to say. God bless America.